Egeanos Y la mano en el giga gaya Jesus 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 I give you a mouth and a wisdom that your enemies cannot resist nor gain sin. Yeah! Glory to God! Latoa! Meanoa! You know, many religious, many religions in the world today have what we call divergent theology. Divergent theologies, and the reason is because people have their different belief systems that they have used to put God in. Many people have created a God in their mind, but you see, God is not what you create, God created you. You didn't hear that. God is not what you create. So say, but if he's God, he should do like this. If he's God, he should behave like this. You are trying to create God in your mind. But you don't create God. God created you. Now, please pay attention. So, the believer therefore must understand God, must see God in the light of the scriptures. You must understand God. You must see God in the light of the scriptures. You know, a vital part in communicating thoughts, communicating thoughts, especially in written form, is the use of words, words and their meanings. The use of words and their meanings. In interpreting scripture, you must be very exact in your understanding of the words that are used. You must be very clear in the understanding of the words that are used. For example, every time I talk about interpretation of scriptures and the relevance of it, somebody said to me somewhere, but if it is the word of God, why do you have to interpret it? Well, the question is, when was it written? When was the Bible written? Thousands of years ago. Even a book written in the 19th century, you will require interpretation. How much more the Bible? So because it was written many thousands of years ago, it therefore means the language that was used then is not the language that is used today. Hence the need for scriptures to be interpreted. For example, you read the Bible and the Bible tells you, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Then the same Bible tells you, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Then the same Bible tells you, friendship with the world is enmity with God. He that is a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Then the same Bible tells you, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What are you talking about? First of all, you said you love the world. Then you say, I shouldn't love the world. Secondly, you said friendship with the world is enmity with you. Then you now said, I should go to the world. How can I go to a world that I'm not their friend? So it seems like there's a contradiction. It seems like the Bible has contradictions. And I've come across many people who say to me, why is the Bible full of contradictions? Well, the seeming contradictions in the Bible only exist in your mind there is no contradiction in the bible there is a harmony to all of scripture you didn't hear that there is a perfect harmony to all of scripture the seeming contradictions only exist within your understanding within your mind so now when you see scriptures like that love not the world for god so loved the world friendship with the world is enmity with god Go into all the world and preach in your english language you are confused because world is world but in bible language world is world even though world is not world you didn't hear that world is world even though world is not world because the original the greek is what was used in translating into english new testament and the hebrew old testament so the hebrew and the greek language were the original languages that were used in the writing of scripture 
and when king james translated english was very young so english didn't have the verbiage to bring out the the, the, the details of what the Greek and the Hebrew were communicating and those of you that are used to translations you know that many times that's a problem with translation shortage of verbiage so when English was translating the Bible from Greek and Hebrew certain things were not in English enabling the translators to bring out the, the detailed explanation of those texts so what we do today which is the job of a bible teacher or a pastor the major job of a pastor is to take the scriptures study them in their original setting and translate them in today's english so when you read world and world in the greek there are two words for world while in english is just one word but in the greek there are two words there's the word cosmos cosmos and there's the word aeons cosmos means a cosmopolitan aeon means a way of thinking a way of thinking so when he says for god so loved the world he means god loves the cosmos the cosmopolitan where human beings are god loves human beings when he says love not the world he means love not the aeons love not their way of thinking are we teaching here now when he says friendship with the world is enmity with god he means friendship with their way of thinking when he says go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature go into the cosmos but you will need to understand this interpretation for the scriptures to come alive in their meaning so you know exactly what to do if you're clear can i have a powerful amen for example the famous scripture the famous scripture i kill it and make it alive God kill it and make it alive in the book of Samuel well God killed his son and made his son alive you didn't hear that God kill it and make it alive doesn't mean God is going to kill you it means God will kill his son and raise his son from the dead I don't know if I'm communicating who said it it was Samuel put it up let's read it the book of second Samuel second Samuel I mean first Samuel chapter 2 verse 6 please pay attention first Samuel chapter 2 from verse number 6 please look at it together with me everybody the Lord kill it and make it alive he bring it down to the grave Jesus and bring it up resurrection I don't know if I'm teaching here it's not that God is going to kill people. It means God will kill his son and on the third day, he will raise him from the dead. Why? Because Samuel was a prophet. What was the job of prophets? To prophesy concerning the death, the burial, and the resurrection. If it's clear, can I have a powerful amen? Now, so you must understand the principles of Bible interpretation for your worship to be thorough, for your worship to be correct, for you to worship God properly and this understanding must be situated within scripture it must be situated so in interpreting scripture one must be exact in his understanding of the words that are used in his understanding of the words that are used and I'm sure somebody is thinking right now are you saying God doesn't kill no he doesn't he has never killed he doesn't kill he will never kill and somebody says what are you talking about just stay with me a few more days just stay a few more days i need to be clear i thought somebody would shout hallelujah so in the course of these studies the scripture will be our focus we will rely on the greek and the hebrew and translate them into the english language we will sit where they sat we will hear what they heard in their world take what they had in their world and interpret it in our world so that the word of god comes alive a fundamental rule in bible study is to carefully and systematically study doctrinal subjects carefully systematically study doctrinal subjects in order to avoid arriving at erroneous conclusions 